Uh, this is uh, this is Galaxy International School Uganda, and uh, we'll be interviewing parents, talking about uh, how they are going to find today's workshop concerning uh, not working hard but working smart and e safety awareness. Won a gold medal. When Kipro teach won a gold medal for Uganda, who was the second? You see? Ah, who, who, them? You see? So people always remember the first. The girls come in for two weeks. No interaction with the parents because we need them to learn the culture of the school. So two weeks, we have a class day for S1. Even the neighbors will come. So one child will have daddy, mommy, auntie, Jaja, even the neighbors, and they will come and they sit and pack that hole. And they're looking at their girl. Do they have cuts? Are they okay? Then we will go to S2. The hole will be half. By the time you move slowly to S3, you will have a few like you. And then they will wake up in S4 because they know it is what? Time for exams. Then you will have a full book. And then when their children are not doing well, they will start. What is wrong with these teachers? What happened? I brought my, my girl with a four at school. So this is what will happen. You will fall. The, 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 the student success will fall. And you will have everything to blame. It is you that you that will be blamed. So um, I'll move on to this. This I do um, with families. Um, I mean teachers, work harder. We expect you to put in more effort. You know, work harder. This is not good enough. And then so now, when I had, when I, uh, I read this thing, I said, I have to go and really understand what working smart is. What's the average age? I'll take a 16 year old being at present, that is zero, this is 80 here. Um, you need to sit with your children and ask them where, where do they see their future until they're 80. I did this with my children and um, they presented, okay now I am going to be uh, to do digital art. I am at A level here, Zoe. Um, afterwards, what are you going to do going to university? Then create routine habits. Um, commit yourself to, the, to certain actions every day and then they'll, they'll be okay. If you're kicking football, then also create a routine in writing, then you will be improved. Work in chunks. Break up your work in small manageable projects, then this will keep your mind fresh and it reduces on your anxiety in order to finish that task. Work around your strengths and weaknesses, I talked about that. And spend time in nature. Wow, who spends, you know, their forest is green, walk around, think about it. We don't do forest walks in Kampala or Uganda. What is it in man that is disturbing and how can I help? You know, and I don't, not in the sense that you are going to take them home to pump them with work in that position that uh, will make you feel happy at 80. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, Miss Saha, we want you to tell us how the workshop was. You tell us how it impressed you, what you found interesting, and maybe generally, what, what are your thoughts about the workshop for today, working hard and not smarter? Well, actually, I like it. I like the content of the, the, mm. the professor, mm. the idea of working smarter. Mm. I kind of actually already implemented at home. I have been doing my own uh, search on it and it's really working well for me. Uh, I don't have to stress with my child. I kind of gave her a... She's studying less but more 
constructive. So I did like it. I like the input from the parents. However, I like to have the idea that um, it's good to grow them on a good education base, but we don't want children who will grow up to be only education and you know, we have to grow about kids who we need good people. Mm. We need to have a social good, skills. decent mm. children with good social skills who, of course, they mm. want to achieve in life. Mm. But the most foundation for them is to be a good human being. Mm. Because the, we don't need somebody who's a good at education, he's mm. a doctor or anything, Spiritual. but lack the simple human mm. interaction mm. skills. Mm. So that's when I like it. I hope it will be discussed more in the mm. upcoming uh, workshops. Mm. Yeah, And I'm still looking forward to the end of the workshop. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sashaka, we need you to share with us what your thoughts, um, interests, and uh, and views about today's workshop on working harder and not smarter. What were they? It's actually the other way around. Working smarter and not harder. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's amazing to teach our kids to be smarter in the way they approach things. Mm. Basically, not just even academic things, but life in general. Mm. Uh, one thing that really caught my eye is to really encourage our kids not to focus on uh, their uh, strength only, yeah. but to try and also improve their weaknesses. Sure. So if your child is good at something mm. and weak at the other thing, mm. I think you need to uh, encourage them to spend a little bit more time mm. also improving their weaknesses mm. so that they can be mm. balanced children True. at the end of it all. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hi Jennifer. I'm very good, thank you. So I just want to know what your thoughts are about today's presentation. Working smart and not hard. Mm. Okay, what, I, what I can say is that it has been very, very informative for me. Mm. I realized that there were some things I, I wasn't doing. I mm. thought my kids were still young. Mm. Yeah, but uh, from this presentation, mm. I realized that I, I need to work smarter. Probably I've been working harder. Mm. Yeah, I need to get them to a routine mm. and mm. probably see that they can follow mm. it and uh, you know get to get more involved at school. Yeah. I've been involved, but I realized that I need to do more because, for instance, I don't know all my my children's teachers, mm. and I, I think I need to take that step. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you. Dr. Kahiji, want to thank you so very much for the wonderful presentation. I personally, there's a lot I picked out of the many things you talked about, many profound words of wisdom that you passed on to us and the Galaxy International School parents. Um, I just want you to kindly pass on a word to the parents who haven't been able to come and attend this wonderful workshop. Um, Hi, hi parents. Um, in order to achieve academic and social excellence for your children, uh, we need to look at the three-legged stool mentality, where you have the parents, the teachers, and, and the students. In order for the students to achieve academic and social uh, excellence, you have to be present. The teachers have the curriculum that they follow, um, the students are taught this curriculum, but the parents, in a sense, have to be there to support this growth. Um, what happens is that if your child is challenged and you have not been involved, then um, at the end you'll start asking, what did Galaxy International School do to my child? You know, And then you ask, at that point, a question that Galaxy International School will ask you, where did you drop the ball? You need to follow your child all the time and all the way. I talked about um, mapping their life line, uh, which is um, 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 an aspect or a phenomena where you look at the present, you look at the future, and you look at the past. So you need to reconcile and understand your present state as yourself as a parent and also as a child. And you say, what are those things that my, my, my child is good at? What are those that are challenging them? And then you look at the future. Where do I want my child to be in the future? And then, um, in, a, in a sense, you're working smarter because then you are planning for your child. 
So anything that is challenging them, you map it back. And anything that is contributing to your child's future and uh, excellence uh, in terms of academics or social well-being, you map it forward. And then you work at that. So it's important that uh, parents come and attend um, such workshops in order for them to understand and share. Uh, because being with um, uh, raising a child takes a village. Your child is in this community and actually a big percentage of the time they are at school interacting with uh, students or children from different tribes, uh, different mentalities and different uh, uh, ways of, be of being. So it's important that you come and see and learn from what who is interacting and who is responsible for the children that are interacting with your children. So it's extremely important that you prioritize your child rather than other things because they are there because you made them. You made them and you are actually responsible for them. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Kahiji. Uh, so the first objective is to recognize the dangers associated with the uh, internet and then after we recognizing the dangers we shall need to recognize to find out ways how we can help protect our children and then for we shall have to devise means of how we can empower our children to be able to protect themselves when they are online okay um i'd like to uh, preface our presentation by first of all having a simple video I'd like us to watch this, then we shall have to, uh, to evaluate it again. Some of us could have watched this video before. You know what the blue whale challenge is? Some people say the blue whale challenge might be an urban legend, but many parents and educators are concerned about this social media challenge and movement that is gaining attention online. The tasks escalate throughout the 50 days, and on the last day of the challenge, the only way to win or complete the challenge is to commit suicide. Many of the tasks include acts of self-harm, as you can see on the right, like urging players to cut themselves in the shape of a whale. Players join the Blue Whale Challenge by posting certain hashtags or joining specific groups on social media in the hopes of getting selected by a group administrator. Although the Blue Whale Challenge isn't a specific app, it can be used on just about any network using a series of hashtags. The Blue Whale Challenge is targeted to 10 to 14 year olds, and players are required to send photo evidence to their group administrator to prove that they have completed each specific task. Bloomberg says Blue Whale, with the exploitation of self pity and teaching school and sample day say we don't know we might not know much about this or we are not so much interested in this uh, 50 to 60 followers and then the adults realize that they are few here but the trends are again changing even the adults are coming um, so you find that research shows that close to 91 percent of what they post are photos 53 percent even addresses sometimes you don't create uh, conducive environment or you're not approachable. That is why they hide things. That is why they even go under their blankets and start watching these things. And it is true. They are going to be corrupted in the head. And they won't be those desired husbands and wives that you want to send out in the world. Communication and understanding and creating that brand. What, who are you? And what do we stand for as a family? That will help you. It even takes up a lot of this space, by the way. So the more you buy, when you abbreviate, you realize that um, uh, even the rest of the space will not be taken up. Okay? These, these are the things that students do. Even when you stop with them, they will always do. They go there, then they do some things, and then they, whenever they move the cursor, you see the screen shaking, 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 very vigorous, and you're like, what do you gain out of this? Like, it's okay. For example, does he like me? Okay. I think as parents we've got a role to play. We've got to draw the line and say, you know, I think this is going to happen. Does he really need it? Is it a necessity? Is it a tool of trade? Or is it something that we can actually say, no, I think this is let's moderate that learning process and say we want to groom these guys to become responsible citizens one day. But my view is, can we try at least to put in place 
some mechanisms to try and block to, to whatever extent that we can. It is, as it is, I think she said, three legs stool. I would like to add one more leg to the stool, saying that it's me, myself, trying to educate myself, I'm the student, my society, my home, and then the, the child. Share with us your thoughts, your reflections on today's workshop on online safety and awareness. I think my uh, experience today was, was really good. Uh, I was very particularly impressed by the way different parents uh, responded, showed concern, and it was also very interesting to see how much we are exposed in terms of the risk, in terms of social media, in terms of uh, the, the exposure levels of our children. And we as parents and the school administration, we've got a joint responsibility to manage this risk together. Yeah. So you also talked about children, like families and homes having values being set right from home so that they, when, when they come to the society, then they are able to sustain, they have a character that they are able to sustain their jobs, they are able to continue working well in the education. Can you please add something more on that? Yeah, I think in my experience, uh, the, the foundation, to me, the, the, the family is really a foundation of everything. Whatever we learn uh, from our parents uh, is at the end of the day what makes us, uh, we can acquire these other skills at school, you know, as we grow, uh, as the children grow and get exposure and they get different levels of academic uh, exposure, but the real foundation starts from home. It's from home that we get this, the discipline, the values that, that make us what we are in society. It's what, at the end of the day, will make these children grow into responsible global citizens, if I can put it that way. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Balkagira. Mm. For our workshop today, the 9th of December 2012, we are more than grateful for the parents that have endeavored to attend as they learn and get insights on how to ensure that their children work smarter and not harder. It has all been said, wrapped up by Dr. Evelyn Chigozi Kahiji and our own, our very own ICT teacher, Edward Tebandeke. How do we work smarter? How do we ensure that our kids, our children are working smarter and not harder? Through the three-legged stool, we are together. Together we can achieve something as a team. And yes, we believe after this workshop, our parents will work, will endeavor that their children are working smarter and not harder as they plan, as they take them through the past, the present and the future, as they develop more communication with them and ensure that the e-safety and awareness is a plan that they will support together as a team. Thank you all parents, thank you all teachers, and thank you to all our children. Yeah, can you please share with us your thoughts on views about today's workshop, working smart and not harder, and online safety awareness? Mm. That's right. Mm. Uh, today, after joining this workshop, yeah. of course, we have been so excited mm. coming to see how it is going to take place and what new things we are going mm. to explore. Mm. Definitely, definitely, there are certain things mm. which we, in our routine lives, mm. in our daily routine lives, mm. we may take it so easily, but certain points, mm. Mm. after getting into and you keep reminding yourself, mm. uh, we have to understood one thing very straight, that mm. you have to draw mm. a certain uh, line mm. between being a parent mm -hmm. and with your child, mm. and how deeply you can get involved mm. in their life. Mm. It is very necessary that uh, mm. you don't have to just take your child as a normal, mm. you know, like uh, a family member, but it is a special child. You mm. need to take extra mm. uh, steps mm. into their life, in daily life, mm. that what exactly happening mm. in, in, in their uh, routines, mm. in their classrooms, mm. uh, what kind of uh, friend circles they are getting into, true, true. involved, and mm. what other activities mm. are they doing mm. online. Yes. So these are the points which I think uh, mm. they were so much... Uh, highlighting mm. about uh, what relationship we should actually maintain mm. with the kids mm. at home. Yes. And definitely we have seen there is a big role the mm. school is being playing mm. and this workshop is I think if it 
takes place uh, in a like twice or thrice in a year mm -hmm. it is really going to motivate so many parents to join uh, as we saw today the mm. numbers of parents were a bit few mm. but i'm sure after we attended we will talk mm. to other parents as well that how effective it was yes. so thank you for inviting us thank you too yes because when you look at the thing nowadays, mm. online is the, is the key things in the, in, in the learning. So mm. our children ha have to use the internet. Mm. Not if they don't use, if they, they use internet, mm. definitely they are going to fall. Mm. So e-safety, e the community, our children, they have to know about that. Mm. Uh, otherwise, mm. it's going to be mm. a very worse word now. Mm. Okay, this has been Galaxy International School Uganda. We've been uh, having uh, two, uh, two, two facilitators in one workshop, looking at working smart and not harder, and also uh, e-safety awareness. And these have been really uh, topics and uh, subjects that really stand out that we need to have ourselves sensitized and learned about so that we can be able to model our children to fit in tomorrow's world holistically. Um, we just want to thank the parents, we want to thank everyone who has enabled to put this up together. We hope to have more as a school. Thank you very much.